Hall of Famer, Wilbur Pete Henry, a.k.a. Fats, was one of the NFL's largest and most dominant linemen in the 1920s at 5 foot, 11 inches, and weighing 245 pounds. With the advancement of the game of football, one thing that was inevitable was the evolution of the athlete. Coaches' strategy and player specialization led to an increase of athletes with unique physical attributes and skills. Two words, size and speed. In today's game, the average running back is about 5'11", 193 pounds, and the average on tackle is 6'5", 315. Now, could you imagine telling the coach from the 1920s that you had a player that was about six inches taller and weighed about as much as your most dominant player in the league. And oh yeah, he can outrun any player on your team. Beat your new running back. <laughs> it would be crazy to see their facial expressions. And by the way, he's only in high school. Beat current NFL running back, Derrick Henry, at the age of 18. But you know what? I think we've seen this before. But let me know who you win. Derek Lamar Henry Jr., born January 4th, 1994, is one of the NFL's most dominant running backs. As a 15 year old freshman at Uly High School in Uly, Florida, Derrick Henry ran for 2,465 yards. The following year as a sophomore, he upped that total to 2,788 yards. His junior year, 2,610 yards. And for the grand finale as a senior, he rushed for a state record 4,261 yards, putting him at a career total of 12,124 yards, which broke the national record set by Ken Hall in 1950. As a five-star recruit, Derrick Henry chose to attend the powerhouse Alabama Crimson Tide with head coach Nick Saban. As a true freshman in 2013, you could tell Derrick Henry was different. He rushed for 100 yards and a touchdown on eight carries and had a 61-yard touchdown reception and a 45-31 loss to the Oklahoma Sooners. In that game, a Spanish broadcaster nicknamed him El Tractorcito, or the Little Tractor, due to his long stride and powerful running style. In his sophomore year, Henry shared the backfield with TJ Yeldon. That season ended with a 42-35 loss to the Ohio State Buckeyes in the college football playoff. The following season, with Yeldon going to the NFL, the stage was all Derrick Henry's, and he wouldn't disappoint. That season, along with Alabama winning the national championship, Henry won the Heisman Trophy beating out finalists Christian McCaffrey and Deshaun Watson. He won numerous other awards, including the Doak Walker Award, the Walter Camp Award, and the Maxwell Award. Using a little common sense, he declared for the 2016 NFL Draft after his junior season. Going into the NFL Draft, Henry was projected the late first round or second round pick. Scouts regarded his main assets to be his large frame, his violent running style, and his ability to break tackles with ease. His speed, long strides, and his superior conditioning, along with consistent play, were also pointed out. The main concerns, however, were about the wear and tear on his body that he took as a workhorse at Alabama. They considered him to have slow acceleration, and he only had average foot speed. He had below average catching ability, and he had a real narrow base running style. He was considered to have sluggish cutbacks, and he ran tall. With that being said, Henry measured at 6'3", 247 pounds. With his size and speed, you would almost think he was an anomaly in the NFL. But I got a few guys I think he compares to. Yeah, we've seen this before. First up, Eddie George, who just by physical appearance alone, at 6'3", around 235, was almost a clone of an early Derrick Henry. And as a senior at Ohio State, he beat out Tommy Frazier for the Heisman Trophy. 
Along with his powerful running style that compared to Henry, he was also seen by NFL scouts to have an upright running style. His biggest criticism, much like Henry, coming out of college was, could he be the workhorse for an NFL team with all the pounding he took at Ohio State? How would George respond? In 96, he won the NFL Rookie of the Year award. And as an Oilers slash Titans start running back through 2003, he never missed a start. He made the Pro Bowl four consecutive years from 97 to 2000 and was a key part in the Titans Super Bowl appearance against the St. Louis Rams. George is only the second NFL running back to rush for 10,000 yards while never missing the start, joining Jim Brown. So for a back that had durability concerns coming out of college, I think Andy George responded well. The next player we're going to highlight, who ironically enough, started with the Houston Oilers, who in turn became the Tennessee Titans, is NFL great Earl Campbell. Campbell, the same as Eddie George and Derrick Henry, won the Heisman Trophy and was a unanimous All-American coming out of the University of Texas. Campbell was drafted first overall in the 1978 NFL Draft. The game back then was a lot different than it is today. Oilers head coach Bob Phillips said it takes a great running back to have a winning football team. And this kid is a great running back. Yeah. Back then it was a far cry from what it is today. Wide receivers now run the league. And running backs use them up, trade them away or release them. With an aggressive running style which favored running over players instead of around them, questions quickly begin to arise over how long Campbell can stay healthy. Former running back Rod Johnson, whose career was cut short, said he runs with a lot of reckless abandon. You can run like that in college, but you can't do that for 10 years and hope to survive. Hall of Fame running back Franco Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers said knocking over people can look very good, but you can't do it forever. Sometimes it's going to be somebody else who knocks you over. So the most important thing, I think, isn't to get a few extra yards every time, but make sure you're healthy enough to play. Coach Bob Phillips, he doubled down. He favored Campbell's running style. I've been looking for a running back like Earl, he said. I'm not going to change his style. Why would I? You don't want a guy who gets hit and then flops on the ground. Earl does the same thing other backs do, only a lot better. Campbell had his most productive season in 1980. That year, he had 1,934 yards in only 15 games. He led the league in rushing and touchdowns and broke his own career record for carries with 373. In that year, over 60% of his yards came in the fourth quarter. Campbell said, that's when the tough get going. That year, he had four games over 200 rushing yards, a single season record that still stands. Till this day, Campbell is widely acknowledged as one of the best power running backs in NFL history. The final running back I compare Derrick Henry to is the great Eric Dickerson. Standing at six foot three, 220 pounds, is another one of those tall, imposing running backs. In my opinion, even though he's a Hall of Famer, Eric Dickerson is one of the most underrated running backs in NFL history. He reached 10,000 yards in his career faster than any running back in history, doing so in just 91 games. He had an 11 year NFL career and gained 13,259 yards, which at the time of his retirement was second all time. So what compares these three running backs to Derrick Henry? Well, with Eddie George and Eric Dickerson, all three running backs stand at six foot, three inches tall. With Eddie George only being about 10 pounds lighter than Derrick Henry and Eric Dickerson around 20. Earl Campbell, the similarity is definitely the fierce running style and also the fact that in the fourth quarter, he only gets better. The crazy stat I put out earlier as far as over 60% of Earl Campbell's yards coming in the fourth quarter during that 1980 season was crazy. A side-by-side -side comparison of running styles with Eddie George is probably the closest thing you'll get to Derrick Henry, just for the eye test. And when you look at the smooth, long stride running style of Eric Dickerson, it compares to Derrick Henry. Although Derrick Henry is nowhere near as fast 
is Eric Dickerson, who many perceived during his career was one of the fastest backs in the league. His style alone definitely compares to Derrick Henry. So with that being said, those are three guys that I definitely compare to current NFL running back Derrick Henry. I know there are a ton of guys out there and a few more comparisons, so please feel free to chime in, put your comments down, and let me know your opinion. Once again, I appreciate you checking me out. It's Mr. Who You With, signing off. Oh yeah, and don't forget, if you like this content, please like and subscribe for your boy so you get all notifications of future videos. Who You With.